How's it going everybody? My name is Jesse and welcome back to Male Nurse Mentor. You guys saw the title for today's video. I'm going to be talking about how to succeed in those core prerequisite courses. Specifically, anatomy, physiology, microbiology, chemistry. Those are the ones I'll be discussing today and the ways to give yourself the best chance of succeeding and getting those A's. I'm pretty excited for a video like this. I haven't done one. This was a video idea from a comment. So if you know this was you, shout out to you and I appreciate it. And moving forward, anytime you guys have any good questions that would be a solid video topic, I won't hesitate and I'll make a video about it. So feel free to leave a comment down below at any time on any of my videos regarding some questions you may have that you may feel may be great for the collective whole to add here on the catalog here on this YouTube channel. I don't feel like I need to explain it too much, the purpose behind a video like this. The main thing I'll mention is it still continues to be very competitive to get into these nursing programs, especially if you're going through the public route, which is my recommended route. Financially, it makes the most sense. Private is always an option. It just costs a lot more. Because of this competition, because of how competitive and impacted these programs are, you often do have to get A's in these core prerequisite courses. I'll be transparent though, I'll let you know, I got into one of the CSUs here in California, CSU Chico, shout out, with getting one B. I also didn't have work experience, but I leaned into my T-score, tried to get all A's, got all A's except one B. That one B was in chemistry. I was getting ready to work as a CNA, doing my thing with that, and fortunately for me, I got accepted at the time I was about to start working as a CNA. So what I've learned with that experience is one of the best ways to get into one of these programs, these public programs, is getting A's or as many A's on your transcript as possible, especially on those prerequisites that they're asking for. So I'm hoping with a video like today's, you'll be able to implement some of these tips into your own strategy. These are proven tips to have worked for me, literally the same ones I used in my journey and my process I'm gonna be sharing with you today. So make sure to try some of these out for yourself and see if you can use them to your advantage as well. And as always, friends, good luck on your journey. It's not easy, but you guys are on the right path. Just keep moving along step by step by step. So here at number one, friends, I have identify your study process. You have to know how to study in order to effectively study. You may have your method now. Maybe you're wondering why am I still getting B's? Why am I getting C's in my classes? Like why am I struggling? It's probably because of this. You don't have your study process dialed in as much as you should. And let me just give you some examples, right? For me, I just wrote it down because I thought about it. I was like, what was the process that I used? Mine was to read the book and study the PowerPoint slides. That was it. I just leaned very heavy into that. Whether I go to class or not, my outcome is still the same. I'm still gonna go into the books and read those pages, skim through them, find the areas I need most. And honestly, if you have a really good professor, they will make really solid PowerPoints for you. So most of my study time went to reviewing the PowerPoints because on those PowerPoints, my thing is that I found is they're not gonna put it on a PowerPoint slide if it's just something you're not supposed to know. The fact that they highlighted what they want you to know on a PowerPoint slide tells you that's something that can definitely be on that test. So for me, that was like a way of focusing on specific material to study that specific material. And then if I need a little bit more information, go to the book and that was it. That was my process. And I would just put a lot of time into that. And I had it dialed in and that worked for me. For other people, you know, they use whiteboards. You can use Quizlet. I used Quizlet for certain classes. I've also seen some people use tape recorders, right? Maybe it's just something that makes you feel better to know you have those actual speaking notes, those lecture notes of your professor talking in class. Take those back with you, re-listen to them, right? Some people also very adamant about just studying off their written notes, whatever they would hear in class, jot down notes, jot down the PowerPoint slides. You know, they had to actually write these things down. Another method. I also noticed some people like to attend office hours, meet personally with the professor, build a relationship, go to them frequently. That's another method. Some people like to study alone and study with others. That's one key piece here. You definitely have to sit with yourself on. Some people literally, like myself, you just can't study with others. I get distracted. I listen to what other people are saying and it distracts me and my own thought process of how I study. And I learned this early on about myself. So I wouldn't study actively, like actively study in groups. So when I'm learning material for the first time, I would stick to myself. I'd be that lone individual studying on my own. Some people though, they have to be around others, the complete opposite of me. 
So find out where you land on that and also implement that into your study process. Another thing here is some people study very good at home. Other people have to go somewhere, right? For me, I was a homebody. I can't study in a coffee shop. I can study in a library, you know, it's quiet enough and you know, it's like a different setting, but my, my space was my desk that I created at home, my bed, I lay in bed and study, and I would just alternate between like my desk chair, bed, desk chair, bed. Sometimes I'd go sit in the backyard too, in a chair. Like those are my study spots. Some people had to go somewhere. My partner, my girlfriend, when we met in college, she was like that. I would go with her to study sometimes at coffee shops. I couldn't even study there, but I would just go to hang out with her. I've also known classmates who have to go to the library, right? Like they can't be at home to study. Find out what works for you. But my whole point here at number one is identify your study process. This will help you so much along the way. Luckily for you, your prereqs, right? If you're starting from high school, I'm just giving you guys an example here, a highlight. Starting from high school, going into your first semester, second semester, test out the waters with different approaches. As you really start getting into these core classes, hopefully you have the study process dialed in and you know exactly what works for you. And if you don't, maybe you're just making little tweaks here and there for specific classes. So can't stress this part enough here. And number one, identify your study process. So here friends at number two, these are some things that you can do even before you get to, to these classes that you're gonna take. This anatomy, physiology, microbiology, chemistry, what are some things you could do to kind of control your grade in a sense, right? Well here, rate my professor. This is number two. Hopefully you've heard of this website. If not, it's a website you go to. They give you a grading system. It's like a public grading system of reviews over time that these schools receive, that these professors receive. So when you're signing up for classes, look up that professor you were about to sign up for and the other one that's an option. Look them up on Rate My Professor to see what each rating for each professor is. If one of them is like a 2.2 and they say they do a bunch of tests and the other one's like 3.2 and they don't do as many tests, you know, they, they, they're very good on homework grading systems and things like that, you would, you would clearly in that situation go with the 3.2 versus the other one, right? Like you want these things to be easier for you. I can't stress this one enough, right? So use this website to your advantage. Control your environment as much as you can. This one big tip that I utilized throughout my whole prerequisite journey was rate my professor. If I had two professors and I didn't know which one to choose because I didn't know either of them, boom, I throw, I throw both names into rate my professor and hopefully they were both in there. Sometimes these professors are so new they're not in there yet, so you have to take a risk. But if someone's in there and you, and you look them up and they're on there and you're seeing a lot of bad reviews, in that situation, I would go with the one I don't know, right? Versus the one I know is bad. Utilize that tool, especially when you're gonna sign up for these classes, control that environment as best you can. This next one here is another thing, number three. It's an odd tip, but it's one that you can also do to help yourself before you even begin, right? Maybe it's something you've heard of, maybe it's not, but it's something I've kind of noticed in my journey and I'm like, that actually did help a lot. So I just wanna share it with you guys. And it's this, attend a school without a plus or minus grading system. Right, I'm gonna say that again. Attend a school, if you can, without a plus or minus grading system. What I mean is you wanna attend a school, if you can, that only gives out grades A, B, C, D, right? I'm gonna tell you why. The alternative to this is, you know, A plus, A, A minus, B plus, B, B minus, so on and so forth, right? With the plus minus system. The reason you wanna do this, and this is one thing that helped me a lot, especially when I was applying to these schools with my GPA and the grades that I got in these classes. I attended a school that only had A, B, C, D grading system, not one that had a plus or minus. So when I got an 89% in a class, that was bumped up to an A, and instead of being an A minus, it was an A, like a middle grade A. So I got four points for the class. All those things help out your GPA. If you attend a school with a plus or minus, there's other pieces of that I'm not gonna dive into the weeds, but all that affects your GPA, right? Sometimes you're gonna be applying to schools that they have it all listed out, right? You get this many points for A plus, you get this many points for an A, you get this many points for an A minus, this many points for a B plus, this many points for a B minus, so on and so forth, right? For me, I in that situation, I would have deserved an A minus if I was attending a school with the plus or minus grading system. But because I wasn't, I attended a school that gave me an A, even though in another school I would have gotten A minus, I slotted myself in to get the points for an A, not an A minus. Because my school 
gave me an A. And that is because I didn't attend a school that had a plus or minus grading system. It's something that really benefited me afterwards when I was applying to these schools that I realized, right? I didn't really know this in real time. I had heard about it, but hey, I just went to my local community college in my local area, you know? I didn't really think much about it. It's something though that really did benefit me because I've noticed some of these schools are very competitive, right? They give you all these points for every little thing. For an A+, plus, they give you slightly more points. For an A, they give you slightly less. An A-, minus, slightly less. So for every single plus or minus, they give you, or they can give you, more or less points. I've seen it. I've looked at these school applications. That was my experience. So an odd tip, to say the least, maybe one that isn't in your control, but if it is, right? If it is in your control, look into this. One easy way to do this is Google your community college name, your school name, and grading system. I'm gonna show you some examples here on the screen. Ubic College is this first one. As you can see, A, B, C, D grading system. Right, I'm gonna show you another one. This is actually Chico State, CSU Chico. In this grading system, you can see they have A, they have A plus, A, A minus. They have the plus and the minus grading system. Just as an example, use this to your advantage. You know, number two, number three, the two that I just said, ways to help yourself before you begin. And just before we go deeper into this video, friends, I just wanna give a little shout out to my website. It's called californiaprenursing.com. If you're a California student and you want a nursing list, I have a free one on that website with very searchable links. You click on it, it'll take you directly to the information. It also has information on the website itself, broken down to cohort size, price, application periods, and things like that. So it's a very useful tool. I also wanted to say, if you need any help with your pre-nursing blueprint, right? You're here right now, you don't know how to navigate this path. I do offer a service on there where you and I would sit together, we would formulate this blueprint for you. It's like a map that then you take and you can use throughout this journey. I do offer that service, so if you're interested, take a look. And as always, friends, I'm around for help if you need me in many different ways. So here we are friends at number four now. Here I have understand the different approaches to classes. So I'm gonna break these down and I'm gonna let you know what I mean by this. So for anatomy, right? I want you to think of memorizing information. For physiology, for example, I want you to think of understanding the information. This is very important here, right? To understand the different approaches to classes because the approach you might use for anatomy, which is memorization, may not directly transfer and help you in physiology. You're kind of trying a different method for a different class and it may not work. Other examples, microbiology. I want you to think of part skills, right? Like using pipettes, you know, working with the Petri dish cultures, using microscopes, and then also understanding memorization and understanding. That's why microbiology can be a tricky one too because of the skills component. Chemistry, I want you to think also in terms of skills. There's really big and long labs in chemistry. You know, lab practicals happen. I also want you to think of formulas. Understanding and memorization are also part of this. But broken down very simply for the two main ones, I get this question a lot. It's anatomy versus physiology. Anatomy, memorize the heck out of that class. You don't really need to understand. It's literally all memorization. Muscles, bones, little tiny things in the skull. Like, just memorize it. Get resources to help you memorize. Flashcards already made for you from Amazon. Use Quizlet if you need to. Look at visuals with pictures from books that you can get from Amazon, things like that. Physiology, if you try to do that, if you try to just memorize your way through physiology, you're gonna struggle to get that A. You're gonna struggle to succeed. Physiology is one where you like start with the base foundation, study on top of it, understand it, and you kind of keep moving upwards. Right? You have to really understand the body and how it works as a whole. And then the little things that happen with it. So physiology is understanding. Can't really memorize through that. Anatomy, not a lot of understanding. Do have to memorize it. Those are the two most I get questions about. But of course with microbiology, think skills. Chemistry, also think skills. Both of those have pretty big labs included with them. Here, friends, at number five, right? I put simply put in the time. I was never the smartest kid in class, but I also overcame that by honestly just putting in the work. For some people, honestly, you know those people, you've met them. They just kind of don't really show up to class and they're really great test takers. Some people are just naturally very good at retaining information, right? My partner is one of them. I, I've watched her study over time. It could take her five minutes to look at something. For me, it could take that same thing, 25 minutes. I just have to put in more time, right? Same thing here. One of the best ways you can ever help yourself, friends, is just put in the time. 
structure in on the weekends, a specific hour block, specific hour blocks, you know, to get your study time in. And also make sure, because you're putting in this extra time, to also take breaks. I always like using like a 30 minute on, five to 10 minute off type of schedule, right? I'd study and blitz my brain for 30 minutes and take about five to 10 minutes off. Scroll on the phone, go walk around the house, whatever it is, and then come back for another 30 minutes. And I would do that for hours on end, right? Maybe like a four hour chunk. And then I would take a really long break, come back later in the afternoon, do the same thing. And I will admit, right? It's hard to buy in, it's hard to study something you don't really care about sometimes. Just put in the time, you'll see that there'll be an outcome that you'll like because of it. And here friends, last but not least at number six, I wrote, don't waste your time on a study process that doesn't fit you, right? So tying it all the way back to number one and a little bit here with the prior one, right? Putting in the time. Don't put your time into a study process that doesn't work for you. You're just, you're like trying to force something that isn't gonna work. That's why a big part of this is dialing in on that study process. Because the more you have it dialed, the more effective you're gonna be in your studying. One example, right, that I like utilizing for this. If study groups is not part of your study process, don't waste your time and do it, right? I'm just speaking from my own experience, right? For me, I was a lone individual studying. Like that was my process. I didn't like study groups. A lot of my classmates would get together and do their thing and part of me felt like I was missing out, right? But eventually I realized over time, well, I have to study on my own. Like I would go to these study groups early on and I would just feel like I'm wasting my time. I realized that wasn't part of my study process. So I can't put in the time into that wasteful thing for me. What I later realized as like a sort of compromise and a good way to then add to my study process was I would study on my own first and then plan to meet with classmates after, after I've already studied. Now I already have my solid information base and then I would kind of go and then test myself, right? With my other classmates to see what information they knew, what I didn't know, what I could learn, what they didn't know. And then in that sense, it was quite effective for me. It made me kind of regurgitate that information out, say it out loud, and then it helped me retain it even better. But initially, I wanted to ask study groups. That wasn't part of my study process. So I found myself wasting a lot of time. So here, friends, at number six, my biggest thing is just don't waste your time on a study process that doesn't work for you. So I hope this list of tips was helpful, friends. My ultimate goal with this was just to give you some confidence going into these classes to help you guys succeed. This pre-nursing journey is difficult. Be kind to yourself, be patient, take it one step at a time. You got this friends. I'm always around if you need me. I'll see you guys on the next video.